When I opened the package and saw, instead of the usual Baltany zipped case, this vintage style pouch, I really then thought that I'm in for a bit of a treat. The simplicity and elegance of this timepiece is simply captivating. No wonder this design stayed popular for more than 100 years. Baltany did put a small but distinctive mark on the look of this quite unique dress watch, and they also offer it in two movement variations. So, let's take a closer look. Hello and welcome back! Yes, Botany offers this watch with two different movements and with two quite different price tags too. I was a bit wary when Botany sent me this one, let's say more budget-friendly model, but after spending about two weeks with this watch I realized that deciding between the two isn't just a matter of price, and I will share my experience and thoughts later in this video. And you probably saw a pop-up, Botany did send me this watch for free, I don't have to send it back. On my part I'll do my best to share with you my comp comprehensive review of this watch and, of course, all the important links where you can purchase this timepiece will be in the description of this video. Ok, for completeness, allow me a moment to share the background of this iconic design. We of course have here a homage to Vacheron Constantin historic American 1921. In early 1920s Vacheron Constantin, which is part of Holy Trinity of watch brands by the way, introduced a watch featuring a unique angle-oriented dial and a corner-placed crown. The inspiration behind this remains slightly unclear, with one version suggesting it aids in reading time while driving an automobile, and I will definitely test this theory on this Baltany watch while driving my automobile. And in terms of price, Vacheron Constantin recent reissue of this American 1921 starts at around $30,000 for white gold version and goes all the way up to about $57,000 for solid platinum edition. So yes, definitely a true connoisseur collector territory, with some cash to spend. But back to this Baltany, which is thankfully a bit more affordable and is done using stainless steel rather than white gold or platinum. Well, not your average stainless steel though, as I will discuss in a moment when we examine the case. So looking at dimensions first, the square-shaped cushion style case when measured across is just over 38 mm. The case height is 10.5 mm, which is nice and slim, especially taking into account that we have an automatic mechanical movement inside of this watch, which usually requires a bit of extra space for the rotor. Lock to lock distance is 44 mm, super compact and makes this watch suitable pretty much for most wrist sizes. And 20 mm locks will make it very easy to find an alternative strap if we want to. Not that anything is wrong with this one, on the contrary, the double sided leather strap that Boltony supplied is very decent. It is slightly padded towards the case, the stitching is very neat, and a leather feels supple and comfortable on the wrist. The supply strap will cover wrists up to 8.25 inch or 21 cm in circumference. We also have well sculpted and well finished signed buckle here, which gives a nice sense of completeness to this timepiece. And at 69 grams, this watch is very comfortable on the wrist. Well, the stainless steel case is very well put together. We have intricately sculpted lugs, which are well tucked in close to the case and curved down for a comfortable wrist fit. The case has mirror polish finish all around and really looks premium. The cushion style of the case and its quite slim profile of 10.5 mm makes it very comfortable to wear. And as I already mentioned earlier, this is not your average stainless steel. Baltany treated the case to improve the surface hardness to 500 vicus, making it considerably more scratch resistant, which is of course very much welcome on this all around mirror polished case. To put this number of 500 vicus into perspective, this is very similar to the level of hardness of Seiko Dia Shield surface treatment, which Seiko uses on some of their high-end sport models priced at $700 and up. And for reference, I'll put some hardness numbers on the screen, like 316 L stainless steel that most commonly used in watches has hardness of about 150 to 200 vicus, titanium about 350 and sapphire crystal around 2200. 
The back of the case is secured with 8 screws and is also mirror polished. We don't get an exhibition case back here like on the model with Miyota movement, which is not a such a bad design decision in my opinion. Because Seagull ST1701 movement, which is used in this watch, while capable of doing the job perfectly well, still doesn't have the same level of finishing of Miyota 9000 calibers. We have a crown on the top right corner of the case, which is of course a signature mark of this case style. It is a push-pull crown and it is well proportioned and is very easy to operate. And we have quite appropriately declared 50 meters of water resistance here. So we have Seagull ST1701 automatic mechanical movement powering this watch. It is considerably less expensive than Miyota 9039 movement and while this Seagull movement doesn't have the same level of finishing and beats at 3 Hz or 21600 vibrations per hour instead of 28800, this Seagull caliber does present a number of very solid benefits. First, of course, it has a dial layout with a small second hand at 3 o'clock position, which is more appropriate for this style of watch. Second, because this movement doesn't have a date complication, we don't have a crown ghost position here either. And third, it makes the overall price of this watch about $125 cheaper, which on AliExpress is kind of enough to buy you another watch. Also, this is a non-hacking movement, which I think isn't much of an issue on the dress watch. And by the way, for the record, the 4400 movement used on VC American 1921 is also coincidentally non-hacking. Looking at the performance, well, time grapher performance might not be as stellar as Miyota 9039, however, it is still with an accuracy tolerances and in day-to-day -day use in the last couple of weeks, it kept a good time. We have a slightly raised double dome sapphire crystal on this watch with quite an effective anti-reflective coating. Boltony again used some of its magic here that makes their crystals look so extra clear, which complements this timepiece so well. Also, with a sapphire crystal having a very high scratch resistance, it will serve as an additional protection to this high polished case, even further reducing the risk of scratches. And of course, the centerpiece of this watch is this magnificent dial. Boltony offers this watch in two colorways, a pale salmon color one with a quite unique dial finishing and a white one that I have here. I really like this sandpaper texture with a very, very subtle sparkle. We have applied our markers here, which are executed in pre-art deco font. And that is what Boltony did slightly differently from the Charon Constantine dial design, where the hour markers are printed rather than applied. Also, Boltony used spade style hands here, emphasizing the vintage style of this watch, which is also different to the Brigade hands used on the Chiron Constantine. So we still have a well-preserved vintage aesthetics, we have a slightly sunken subdial and a blued second hand, which isn't painted blue, but rather blue color achieved by a special thermal process, which again normally reserved for high-end timepieces. The dial, even under magnification, looks very well executed with high attention to detail and very good quality control. Well, as I promised, I did try wearing this watch while driving an automobile, as it was intended, and I must say that it is quite easy to read the time with this dial orientation. I also tried to wear it upside down, as I saw some comments on the interweb suggesting it to wear it that way, however, it didn't work for me. So, if you manage to get this working for you, well, yes, by all means, do let us know in the comments. And in terms of the wrist sizes, well, as you can see, it sits quite well on my about 7 inch wrist, and it is pretty much at home on a 6 and a quarter inch wrist here, too. So, what's my verdict? Should you consider it, give it a miss, or just go ahead and buy it? Well, for around 160 bucks, this watch packs a bunch of really cool features and an iconic design. So, my verdict will be, well, just go ahead and buy it. Links will be in the description. And for more cool watches, check out my link on the screen over here. And as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It does help the channel. Take care and I will see you in the next video.